tell me about all the things that um, that I could do now that I was single. To uh, manage Bitcoin mining, uh, monitor how much each miner is actually making in terms of mega hash per second, uh, provide alerts for when they go offline, when they come back online, and track exchanges. So, the technical stuff, we're working with uh, Django, Python. I've done more work on the back end. Um, so, what I've done so far with this, since the last time we've seen it, I've, did, I've made a very basic UI. Uh, it's not a whole lot more than what you saw, but it actually breaks down each pool into individual pods and says if it's alive, then uh, color coded specific pages for each pool. Uh, so you click on the full name, and from there you get a list of each individual worker so you can see exactly which mining rigs are online and which ones are offline. Uh, and I work on all the, the uh, optimization for the back end because it used to take roughly 10 seconds to render one page. Now I have that down to about a second. It sometimes shoots up to about five seconds, but I think that's more the connection pulling everything in from the external data sources. So the Django models I redesigned, they're smaller. I used to have a, a separate model for the, the API keys and then one for the, the full data. I just combined that one for full data. Uh, I'm adding a version to be cached, so that way you're not wasting time pulling the live data from the site, which is actually five to 10 minutes old each time you pull it down, and that should cut down the page record. Uh, some of the problems I've had is my mining rig actually failed. I burned out the power supply. So, yeah, I uh, couldn't really do much for test data. And then people just randomly decided to change their JSON APIs, which kind of was like, oh, everyone who built the program, go back and rewrite it. So that's fun. And then the long range times. So, here's what it is right now. Uh, you can see which ones are allowed and dead pretty quick, and page render time is about 1.2 seconds. Uh, and these numbers are actually taken every time you reload the page, which needs to change because they're only updated every five to 10 minutes, as I said. So let's say I want to look at that pool. Uh, I can see what workers are doing what and which ones are offline. Uh, there should be more data with like balance and pending and stuff. The version you saw last time, I was trying to do too much at once. So there's a lot of statements, and this is much more generic, but it works a lot faster. Uh, and then you go over here and you see everything's offline and that should be like that. But I think that's just more the resolution because of the work of Pioneer there. Uh, I plan on having these be gradients instead of just a binary on off. Uh, so that way you can see exactly how many workers and where you need to go fix stuff. So. Okay, so I plan to just cache the JSON data locally. I have mo another model set up um, to do that. And then from there, I can get average stats over time because the numbers you actually saw aren't the actual numbers. They're the numbers at that one point, which fluctuate. So you can actually get a better idea of exactly which miner is doing what. And then from there, we can say offline miners send an email every half hour, hour, uh, use it reasonable time. So, any questions? I'm just working more on the back end stuff right now. Uh, once I get to the front end stuff, I'll explore more options in terms of pushing data. So. The, uh, the value of Bitcoin on exchanges recently has been really volatile. Has that affected the, uh, the viability of this sort of thing? Uh, I thought it would, but <coughs> it seems like um, about a third of people stopped mining Bitcoins, where the difficulty decreased, so now each uh, share you submit is actually worth more. So that's kind of like normalizing out a little bit. And the price is actually slowly creeping back up. So I think as the price goes up, we're going to see more people turning them back on, uh, especially in the winter, because part of the problem over the summer, people have to run cooling solutions. And now a lot of people can just use their computers as heaters, which is kind of nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it, it, it's still viable. There's actually other blockchains that are alternative Bitcoin projects, and this is generic enough that if you have a JSON API, you point to that API and it'll, it'll read data. So it can also work for name coins, which that product, the project might be dead. I know they were doing some security testing on that to uh, reinforce Bitcoin. I don't know how that turned out, but it, it's still viable. And just quick follow up on there: is are there other exchanges besides Mt. Gox? Yep. Um, Maybe some 
some that are run by people who know how to run a financial exchange, which yeah. is something that used to be the Magic the Gathering online exchange. So, <laughs> <laughs> so this is actually where I'm getting the data from, um, because I switched from Mt. where it was just one exchange in time, where you see the latest price, but that wasn't a fair accurate uh, thing. So I actually pulled the data from over here, where it's the weighted prices for the last 24 hours. And the way they weight the prices is it's how long the price was at that and how many coins were changed at that price. Um, so you can see the volume, they take that into account and you get the, the low, high. I plan on putting some of this data on the front page, just the average price, whether or not it's going up and going down. Uh, it seems simple enough to do. And I don't want it changing so rapidly that it goes on and off every time you refresh. So. so I think that's a great tool for people who do mine Bitcoin. Do you actively mine Bitcoin? It yep. seems all kind of like a, um, a pyramid scheme sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, especially because if you think about like, a, so it's, they're capped at like a certain value, right? Or a certain number of Bitcoins will be generated it's static, right? It's yeah. A, a uh, at that point, like the currency becomes like deflates rapidly, right? I, I don't know. I, I don't want to get into like a debate yeah. or anything, but I was wondering if you actively mine Bitcoin. Yeah, I started over the summer. Um, that's where I kind of came up with this data because I was like, oh, well, I have all these pools. I should make something to write it and it doesn't rely on a third party server. So I was doing that and I made like a hundred bucks over the summer just trying to leave the computer on for a few days. And I was like, hey, this is pretty cool. Then the price crashed. So it's kind of like, well, I'll keep going. And then when the price goes back up, I'll have a lot and then it'll be great. Um, it's starting to die out a little bit, I think, but it's also stabilizing around like $3 a coin. So it's still worth it, especially when you're on RPI's power grid and you don't have <laughs> electricity, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you probably shouldn't post that in the video. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Um, just more on the Django side of things. Uh, have you looked into using other extensions like Django Debug Toolbar for monitoring Right now, it's just a Python start time and time thing. Um, I'm going to look more into getting some extensions to run some Django stuff in the background, where it's not it's done like every five, ten minutes or whatever. Uh, I looked into that today, and it looks like a lot of people are just using prompt tabs for that. Um, you could also use Stellar or something. Yeah. There's more zero and zero. Okay. Uh, just so that way it cuts down on what you're actually doing at that page load. So. The Django debug toolbar sounds like it could be pretty useful for me in that. 